If you're a teacher thinking about getting a fish tank, then this is the right video for you. I'm going to teach you how to be successful at fish keeping, some types of fish we're going to try, and hopefully we can have some fun while doing it. So without further ado, let's take a trip to fish school. Okay, so freshwater fish keeping is kind of a big and complicated topic that can be scary sometimes. Don't worry, I'm gonna hold your hand through this whole process. So we're just gonna cover some of the things that I think would be helpful for teachers specifically. There's three main things I'm gonna touch on. The first is keeping the fish alive because, you know. What are you doing? No, 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 he's not gonna talk, he's dead. That's, uh, that's kind of important. And two, we're gonna find supplies at a cheap price. Uh, tanks, lights, heaters, you know, get y'all set up. And lastly, try to create a balanced ecosystem that doesn't require too much maintenance on your part, but that's also, you know, beginner friendly. First things first, keeping the fish alive. Sounds pretty easy, right? I could tell you the basics, like put water in a tank with the chlorinator, let it sit out for about a week, add fish, add a light, buy some sort of filtration, heat it to 75 to 80 degrees, but not if you're getting goldfish though, because they're like colder water. Also they eat plants, blah, blah, blah. You have to understand that every fish is different. And there isn't a one tank fits all solution for every fish. If you want to have success with your fish, the first step is to do your research on the specific fish you'd like to keep. Watch videos and read articles to learn about the diet, temperament, preferred temperatures, etc. Some fish like warmer water, and other fish like it colder. Some fish are peaceful, and others want to kill everything that's in the water with them. Some fish are small, and like to stay in groups, while others get huge. My point is, not all fish work together, but there's a lot of combos out there that do. So I'm going to share some of my favorite options that I would recommend for a fish tank a little bit later in this video. Okay, step two is finding supplies at a good price. Now, if you're okay dropping a bunch of money on new stuff, then go right for it. But I don't know if you've been looking at the prices of new fish tanks lately. But uh, it could get pretty dang spendy. And if you're just wanting a class pet, then that's definitely not something worth breaking the bank for. So here are some of my favorite places to buy affordable fish supplies and more. Starting with Facebook groups and or Marketplace. This is by far my favorite option. Everything you could ever want for your fish tank. There's a lot of good information as well. And you could normally find people locally you could talk to. Next is Craigslist, which is also pretty solid. Feels a bit more weird to me than Facebook groups. Lord is good. Definitely lots of people giving away cheap stuff, but hey, it works. And lastly, I have local club, uh, fish club that is. Now, I don't have one in my area, but you might have a local group of hobbyists that meet up and trade fish, plants, share experiences, talks, other stuff like that. And that's pretty legit, like being able to talk to hobbyists who know what they're doing, who've who's bred all these different kinds of fish, and you, you can talk to them and, and learn quite a bit, more than you'd ever learn from a video. And I'm sure there's a lot more options out there. These are just the three that I feel you're, you have the best bets of getting some, some good deals are. Okay, after you have acquired your cheap fish tank, we begin looking at some basic setups. This is what my ideal setup would look like if I was a teacher, and what fish and plants would I like to have in it. I went with a 20 gallon tank for this, and in my opinion, it's that sweet spot for not being too small or too big. Now some of you may be wondering, does size matter? Yes, better yet. You might be wondering what size is the best, and to that I'd say, it depends on a lot of things that you may or may not care about, and if this is a lot to take in and it's all just starting to sound confusing, don't worry about it. There's some main takeaways here, okay? First, the more water you have in the tank, the more fish you could have. It's general rule of thumb. The more water you have, the more stable the tank gets. And what I mean by this is it takes more waste to make it dirty if there's more water. But if it gets really dirty, then it takes a lot more to clean. Which brings me to my third point. I find that cleaning a large tank is just way easier and more enjoyable than cleaning a small fish tank or bowl. Could you please just get in? Mm. No. Wait, what are you doing? Hey, get away from me. Chop the bat. Those are just some things to consider when choosing your tank size. There's definitely pros and cons to either option. With the 20, you can keep a small community of fish. It won't take up too much space and it's pretty easy to clean. So overall, it's definitely a solid pick. So what fish would I recommend? Well, I'm gonna go with live bears. Guppies, platies, swordtails, mollies. They're more of the popular species that are live bears. We are just gonna be focusing on fancy guppies for this setup. Guppies are pretty small, meaning you could keep larger groups of them, which is good, because they breed like crazy. 
Oh, shit, less. <laughs> If you like to have babies in the tank, that's definitely a plus. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Just get males. They're colorful, and you won't have to deal with, with hundreds of, of babies all over. Other than that, they get along well with each other and other fish, and there's tons of types and colors. There's, there's really a lot to play around with. Next up, bottom feeders. They are the cleanup crew of the aquarium, like shrimp, loaches, plecos, catfish. We're going to be going with cherry shrimp for the setup because I think they go well with the guppies. They'll eat any waste, whether it's uneaten food, dead fish, or plants, algae, or more. Their care is pretty easy as well. They too will breed pretty easy for you. Just make sure that you have some form of cover for the babies to hide in because the fish will eat them. The next one might come as a bit of a surprise to you. You know them, you love them. Snails. Except a lot of people don't love them and consider them a pest and go as far as to crush any snails found in their aquarium. But I noticed something strange. My nephew and nieces are always pointing out the pest snails in my tank and they seem to think they're pretty cool. So if you're wondering why I included snails in our setup, that's why. I, I figured kids enjoyed. And there, there's a lot to enjoy. There's a lot of different snails out there like pond or bladder snails, mystery snails, narite snails, ramswarm snails. They all have some pretty unique colors and shell patterns. Also, if you really hate snails that much and are tired of crushing them, there's a snail that kills other snails. How about that? Okay, now that we have some fish, let's pick out a few plants. Plants are a huge part of creating the ideal ecosystem. And when I say plants, I mean live plants. Not not this fake garbage, okay? Oz! What is that? Also, remember when I said plants are a huge part of creating a balanced ecosystem? Well, it's because fish produce waste, aka ammonia, which becomes nitrate, which then becomes nitrate. Plants eat nitrate. You probably noticed bacteria is also used a lot in the process. Bacteria can be found on filters and in your gravel. Basically, wherever there's a surface to live on, they, they'll live. But plants are very important in eating that waste, plus I think they look pretty. Let's get to some actual plants. Starting with Anubis, there's lots of different types, and it is a slow-growing plant where you can plant the roots, but not the rice. Them. That's where the leaves come out from, and if you bury that, then the plant will not be happy about it. It could do well in high or low light. It likes to be wedged in rocks or tied around driftwood. Don't get me wrong, you could still put it in the sand or gravel, but just don't bury that rhizome. Next up is java fern. Nothing too crazy. It gets dark, longer, thin leaves. This plant is pretty bulletproof, which is why it's on the list. So even if you don't have a green thumb, you could still have success with this plant. Plus it grows baby plants on the end of its leaves. So that's, that's kind of cool. Okay, last plant is java moss. And this might be my favorite aquarium plant. It is super tough. It can grow in a huge range of conditions. It's the perfect plant for hiding babies. So if you do get the shrimp and guppies we talked about earlier, this is going to be great for, for keeping those babies in there and giving them something to eat off of. Main thing to nail down, if you could get lots of bacteria, lots of plants, I mean less maintenance for you. It's good, good things to have happen. The more plants you have, the less water changes you have to do, which is kind of epic. So it's good for you, good for the fish, looks good in the tank. It's a, it's a win win win. Alright, sorry that uh, this has taken a while to get out. It's kind of been a little bit stressful. Uh, this video is also a school project. If you have some questions, be sure to just leave a comment. Speaking of comment, we have comment of the week going on as usual, and there's some pretty good ones. Throw them up here on screen right now. I think Garrett Jarvis, I, I think you won this one. If you hadn't seen last video, then then be sure to go check it out. I, it, I definitely have to agree with with Nafo. It was one of the better videos that I have done. It was it was kind of fun. Be sure to check that out. I'll leave a link to it right above here. And yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed kind of this new style of video, more animated. If if you did enjoy that, be sure to leave a like, comment down below what you'd like to see in next video. With school and tennis wrapping up, I should hopefully, don't quote me on this, but I should hopefully be able to upload more. So thank you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks for watching. You can check out this video or this video. Like and subscribe. Fishy fam all the way.